What is going on, my fellow rockers? It's been a little while, but we are back in Skyfire, remaking the Eldrick the Old video, as I left out a key detail in doing this cycle solo. So quick shout out to Circuit Cascadia for pointing that out, and uh, my previous video of using Bindsight to check your high sun mobs. This is something I definitely did, and I completely neglected to say it or even show it in the last video. So it's a pretty important part, uh, probably the most important part, to get the placeholder back to its original spawn point so we can then run back because I mentioned running back after high sunning uh, one or two mobs and that's not even ideal I don't even know why I said that but um, so I wanted to show that process and also killing Eldrig with nothing but weapons right I already had the epic and the whole point is to get this uh, the uh, chroma drake guts for your epic so that we can get it right so using that is kind of like kind of a cheater item and I had some raid gear so now we're not going to use any gear besides weapons um, so please skip ahead to the different sections of the video uh, to kind of move this along uh, I did create a basic checklist of things that might help you plan this out when you enter the zone so uh, let's get into it and we'll go through everything step by step so here's a very basic checklist I made um, so every time I zone into Skyfire some of the things that I do and get ready for if I want to do this cycle. So we have pet tracking, uh, talk about high sunning, um, bind sight, uh, simple key binding, and then it's just your songs and some extra stuff that you might consider. And that's all we're really going to talk about here. So first thing I have is pet tracking when you zone in, right? If Eldrick is already up, we don't have to do any of this long drawn out process. We just go find them, pull them to the sides of the zone or wherever you want, uh, and reverse kite them down easy day but if he's not then we have to go out and find him so the way that we could tell if he is up or not is we are going to use our level 39 charm song Solon's Bewitching Bravura um, this uh, the lower level song can get resisted quite a bit uh, depending on the mob that you're trying to charm so use the high level one the higher level one uh, to do that and then we'll make the key um, pet attack Eldrig underscore the underscore old or just pet attack Eldrig so what that looks like is we run out here. I am at the over there zone line. So I'll just run out, find a mob like this mature Chroma Drake. I have the hockey made here, Eldrig, just pet attack Eldrig. Um, I also made one just for another mob in the zone so you can see what it looks like when a mob is up. So that's just an extra thing. But we care about Eldrig. So we come over to this Chroma Drake, we cast our song. He is now our pet and we'll hit Eldrig. I have no messages popping up anywhere that would indicate that he is up. So what, is that, what does that look like? So if I have him attack a bottomless fester, it does say Charm he breaking. is attacking the, uh, the uh, target master, right? That means that that mob is up. So if Eldrick was up, it would just say, hey, attacking Eldrick the old master um, or attacking target master. So of course it broke. Careful, these guys do hit a little hard, so just be on the lookout. I just have him sit, and then I just go zone out and clear the aggro. But that's it. So that's how I would tell if he's up or not. If you want the message to pop up, means that he is. If there is no message, Charm he is breaking. not up, and we must then go find the placeholder. All right, back to the checklist here. Um, want to be sure that you're level 56 to be able to use our high sun. Uh, the bread and butter of finding the placeholder is this song. Uh, so you want to ensure that it is daylight, it's not getting dark, don't waste time. You know, if it's already night, then you can time it, cool, whatever. Uh, you get in here, and you can high sun. If it's getting near nighttime, then um, just do what you can, and uh, hopefully you get it quickly. I have gotten it a few times on the first try. Other times, it took forever to find the placeholder. So it's just hit or miss with that. So then every time we high sun, then we want to buy in sight on that target to see where he, his spawn location is. Right, we want to get the right one. Uh, that's your level 34. Um, Lysia Solidarity of Vision is the song. And another helpful tool is to use uh, target last two targets keybind, which will uh, help in case you lose your target. And what that looks like is, so if I come out here, just pop on cellos. I have some mobs out here. So this is good. What you want to do is in the options, you can go to your keys and you go down to target. And the very last one is toggle last two targets. And I made it my X key because I don't use X for anything else. And so what would happen is, so say I say that was the placeholder 
and I accidentally cleared him off my screen. I can't reclick him. Well, I don't know where he is. Um, I'm running back, you know, to find him. I could hit my X key and it will bring him back up. Or if I had him targeted and I accidentally click on another mob like this Sky Ash Drake over here. Um, I'm like, ah, shoot, now I lost my target. Well, you can go back, hit your X key, and it'll take you back to the initial target. So that's why you might want to use that. So after you high on a mob, try not to click anything else. It can be kind of hard and difficult. Um, you'll see uh, when you have them targeted, you'll know it's the right one because their name will be flashing. Right, That's a good indicator if you're running back and you're trying to determine which mob it was. But uh, that is how... It's just an extra tip for finding your key. All right, so back to the checklist. So our fear kiting songs, uh, your main bread and butter will be your fear, right? Anguish is appalling screech level 26 is your fear song um, and your snare. I typically snare first and then I get fear on. Kind of just helps me out and I'll reapply as necessary, right? Don't let this mob break. Remember that Eldrick is level 51 summoning mob he hits hard you can hit up in the 200s um so be careful he can cast dots and whatnot so just be mindful um so we want those two we want largo's melodic binding your level 20 snare because that provides the most snare effect so it'll keep him the slowest of the snare songs so that's why i use that um the next ones are your magic resist debuffers right, this will lower eldrig's magic resistances um so that it helps us land um, fear and snare. So yeah, Fufal's curtailing chant level 30. This is a minus 16 to Eldrig's magic resist or any mob's magic resist with no uh, modifier, right? We don't have an instrument. We're not going to use uh, the epic, right? This is for the epic, so we're not going to use the epic. Um, and I'm not going to change to a drum as you'll see for like occlusion of sound, but uh. So there's also a dot, so that's also good. That's a plus. So this will help us. That's a good three-song twist if you just want to do three songs. Um, otherwise, you do have occlusion of sound level 55. It's uh, minus 10 to magic resist, but it requires a percussion instrument. So I'm not going to swap out instruments and stuff uh, for this particular kill. If you want to do just dots and not even use weapons, you can do that uh, with fear and snare. But... So I think it's going to be faster to use any kind of weapons. Your DPS should be faster, I believe. Uh, level 59, you get your area effect uh, dot, which is Denon's Bevirement, minus 15 to uh, the mob's magic resist. So these two are probably your, your go-to uh, if you're this level. If not, then just use Fufuls at a minimum. Um, if you're a snare, cool. And then you can use either a haste song or other dots to uh, help you just... Uh, beat them down a little bit faster, right? Increase your DPS a little bit more. Uh, again, you can use whatever you want. You might have a better method. That's cool. Do it. Um, <laughs> extra things. Uh, you may want in the backup for all of this is uh, Spear of the Wolf or J-Boots, right? Levitate is great. I have the Levitate Cloak. Um, you want all that stuff, keep it up. Uh, it will help you if you when you start getting ads and stuff to make sure you don't get hit because these mobs still hit hard and they will chew through you over time pretty quickly if you're not healing. So there's a lot to be mindful of and be clicking and all that to keep your health up. Cool. Orbit to Shane. You don't have to break the bank in buying this thing, but it is very helpful and it will you know, help greatly on this mob. So when you use this weapon, it will proc to Shania, which is an MR debuff, of, and it gives a minus 33 to the magic resist, right? So it's pretty good. That's based off the wiki from what I've seen. And... uh cool so that's a uh, good good weapon to have uh if you can get one if not not a big deal i'm not going to use it for the eldritch fight actually i'm just going to use the, the two weapons and nothing else so cool i just put in some extra numbers here if you use all your songs you know you get 40 minus 41 magic re resist debuffed from the creature if you use all three songs right and then 74, that all those with the orb. But to do all that's going to be kind of impractical uh, and all that. So, cool. That is just a simple checklist. Take it as you will. Add on, take off, whatever you want to this thing. Um, just things that I think about and all I really care when I get in here and start trying to melt on mobs. So let's uh, check out the area and get a few more tidbits. 
All right, I'm here at the spawn point location. So this location is uh, roughly at the 500, negative 4,000 loc. So I'm here just to show you, you want to kind of see this uh, from the mob's perspective, right? He's going to spawn right about in here. And uh, this is what you're looking at, right? So when you heist on a mob, you're going to buy in sight, and then you kind of switch your camera angle and look around you really quickly to see where he's at. So the biggest giveaway will be the over there entrance over here on the side so uh, depending on what camera angle you use i guess um, if i'm looking at the mob from head on um, it will be off to your right here uh, obviously off to his left relative but um so the whole cutout you have like the little valley here coming down you have the wall it's huge right you got nothing else around so very good thing to note if you buy inside immediately you don't always have to switch your camera angle because you can just tell there's nothing else here. If there's anything odd that just doesn't look right, it's probably not it. Uh, lava, if you see lava at all, you automatically know it's not in this area and it's not correct. So typically what I'm doing is as soon as I buy in sight, I switch my camera angle, I look over, uh, got, got the wall, we got the over there, you know. Just keep that kind of in the back of your mind <clears throat> and use it as a reference. So cool. Um, just next, I want to talk about the actual area on the maps here. So I am at the spawn location here, um, again, at the 500 negative 4,000 location. On the right side here, this is from the wiki, and uh, you can see the spawn point and then the pathing of the placeholder roughly, right? Very generalized. On The map on the left is one that I made uh, a while ago, and I found the placeholder and then I followed him. I wanted to know where exactly he went. Um, I only followed him for about 30, 40 ish minutes. And this is what I got. So he started and he came down this way, right? Follow the arrows. So he kind of passed right through that uh, lava lake and then went down to the wizard area and he may, and he path backed up, path backed up uh, to what we call the pillar area. And um, also over to the mouth of this little lava lake, which I'll show you in a moment. But so you kind of can take this map at the 1000 area up here and cut it. And Eldrick is going to be probably in this area. So a thousand thousand box roughly is about what he's in. So everything up top I start with first. I scan the area and work my way down if I can. Right. That's kind of how I tackle it. So we'll show that out in the field. Take this for what you will. Um, they're on the actual wiki page. If you go into the comments, people have posted a lot of different locations, uh, location points of where he might have stopped and turned and all that kind of stuff. That's what all these green dots mean. It means that he stopped there or turned. He just turned and went. Um, I put it in blue because he stopped again at the same area and came back down again and all that kind of stuff. So that's all this means. And he double backed on himself and whatever. But so those are the areas. That's what I'll show. And let's get out to the field and get it going. All right. So we're out here in the field. Uh, we are at a bone pile out here. And you can see on my M parse up here that um, I am the little green circle. Uh, up here is what is considered to be the pillar. This fallen down pillar and the mob will usually path where it did it for me up to he about here. He'll stop and then come back down over this little lava river. So kind of from this point down is uh, heading south is where we're going to start really high sun of mobs to, to try to get that placeholder. Um, if you go to the west here, see some other mobs of interest up here. But we'll follow the river just so you have a visual checkpoint and I'll update it here on the end parse. It's just showing you the the little mouth I was talking about of the river. Uh, for me, he did path over here momentarily. Will he path up here again? I don't know. But um, those are two areas and everything south of this is the area that we're going to keep in in high sun. So let's high sun some mobs here. There was a worm here. Um, one thing that's kind of good to do is I'll get Spear of the Wolf up and levitate so that we can 
try to outrun and not take too much damage from these mobs. They do hit hard, so just be mindful. These worms have a further reach, so you got to be a little bit closer in order to uh, to get them. Actually, without anything, I'll just start high sunning. So he goes back to his spawn point, and then we bind sight. I already see lava, so that's not good. And he is far enough away to where he's up near the the Vishane's Peak zone. But he is far enough away where he's not really running, so we have leashed him off. So that's a good thing. Uh, and we know that this guy spawns further north than where we are. So not to worry about running away and all that. So we can stop our song, get the cellos back on, and click it off to get back and finding more. All right, so what I typically do on a normal, normally high sun, a normal high sun routine is I'll find the mob up here. You can aggro them, kind of just keep back a little bit. High sun, bind sight. When this song ends, I'm going to hit my cellos and kind of start running if I know that he's close. So it looks like he is because he's coming kind of faster after me, but it is not the right spawn location. So click that off. And we'll kind of get into the next, to the next mob. So this guy's kind of pathing back and forth. So I go right for him, checking my surroundings as well. We'll bind sight. I kind of keep running. You can hit your auto run. Um, he is coming after me because he is a closer spawn point. So not a big deal. As long as we're moving, he, it gives him less time to catch us, especially if we get ads. So here's that other Drake that I already high sun. I'm sure the bottomless guy, yep, there he is right there. They're both on me. It's not a big deal. I can keep high sunning as long as it's daylight. And we'll try a few more here. We'll try this worm here since he's kind of up here. So again, I will just... Okay, he's aggroed. High sun. I'm going to point away from the other mobs and just kind of run this way hit my cellos and I can see that that is not the correct worm oh it is here is the placeholder that's him all right so click off vision and there we go let's get back whoop no <laughs> that's not my keys here let's get a cello song of travel on I'm keeping him in my target right so if I were to click off then I could simply hit my x key and rebind so that's a perfect example. The, he is our placeholder. I saw the uh, over there zone. So we are running. So once we get to a more safe area, we can drop it, rebind sight to see where he is. He should be pathing straight out to this lake. So if we follow, you know, kind of direct path over to the east wall. Then uh, we should run into him. Okay, that may be him. Let's take, uh, let's clear our area here. Make sure nothing's flying at us. We don't want extra ads. Let's see if that is it. Okay, he's climbing up a pillar. He's still kind of near the wall, so that's fine. That's probably this pillar right over here. Or, it's going to be further down. So that's pretty cool. And also the ads that were on us, we're running fast enough to where we'll probably leash off of them. So I'm not worried about those ads as long as we keep moving. We should be fine outrunning them. So uh, I would think, yep, here he is. I have him highlighted, the same mob. So what we can do right now, let's re high on him. He gets back. He should be right out here. We should be close enough to where he will re-aggro or keep on the aggro so he'll chase us. There he is. 
And just as a reference, I'm going to hide sun again. So you can see where he pops up. So he should pop up right over there. <laughs> so that's where he spawns. So we're going to kill him now. It's a six minute cycle uh, for each kill. And you can see their reach is pretty far. I'm already getting hit. And uh, we'll take care of business from here. Okay, so with this placeholder, I have taken off all my armor except for a bracer that I'm just using as a light source. It's my blazing bracer of Finn and Row, which is only 8 decks, 5 charisma anyways, so not a huge thing. Otherwise, I'm using Breath of Harmony and the Orbit of Shane here for the proc, and then I'll switch out to a, a Yak, Short Sword of the Akisha, to show that it's possible. All right, so Snare Fear, I got two of my uh, magic debuffers up, and so I'll hit him with Snare first. Just to get him to stop and then get into it. So fear's on. He's running. Kind of keeping the middle with these mobs. Um, and you'll be able to do this with every type of placeholder. So here it is. As we get him, it's going to take a little while. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll cycle through. And we'll see how many spawns it takes this cycle around to get to Eldrig. And he should be coming up next. All right, we got him. I got Eldrick the Old here. This is after seven placeholders, so six minutes each. We have three worms, two, one Chroma Drake, one of the sperm-looking things, and two regular Drakes. So again, I have no other equipment on besides a Breath of Harmony and Short Sword of the Akisha. I'm not gonna, even going to use the orb because um, if not everyone has it, well, I, will, I won't use it either. Uh, if it gives us that much trouble, then okay. I might switch to it just to help out. But uh, Snare, Fear, Foofles, and I'm using uh, Denon's Bevirement because Occlusion of Sound does take the Percussion Modifier, which we don't have, so take that into account. Uh, actually, let me throw on the Bracer just for a light source. It's a little dark out here, but uh, let's get to it. Get him on. The Bracer isn't a big deal. I'm just going to pull him as close as I can to the wall over here. He did just put Boiling Blood on me which is a dot, so we'll see how that goes. Alright, Fear is on. Uh, we can tell by the little, there's a small hitbox with this model, so it's going to take a little bit uh, to get used to and just get in there. And sure, Fear gets on. Now, he already resisted. Get that Fear back on. There we go. He's hitting hard, hitting 150. It's going to take some time to chip him down. Just take your time, ensure the songs land. We'll get the dots on after fear. Keep checking, make sure that the fear does land. Uh, if you get a resist, just give it, get it back on immediately. Not a big deal. So there we go, doing pretty good now. Kind of an odd model. Can't really do it in the third person just because of the. It's just weird him flapping around, and I gotta try to stay right underneath him to get into his hitbox. I will kind of monitor the outside, so if he gets too far away, I'll simply uh, let fear break, keep him snared, pull him back to the wall, and just re-engage. So it should be pretty simple. For this kill. I guess I really don't need the bracer on that much for a light source, but. <laughs> the only thing I got, right? If you want to with a Breath of Harmony, probably one of my favorite weapons because of that. You can I can click Nivs, uh, which is a regeneration song, has a regeneration component, so that will help me out here. Again, you don't have to break the bank for the Orbit to Shane or even a Breath of Harmony. I mean, I could do this with some fine steel weapons. As long as he is feared and snared, you're getting hits in, he will go down. So it's going to take a while, so we'll just hang out. Try to get him.
All right, in the final stretch here, last 10%. Uh, he has already stopped kind of running at like 23 or something, whatever it was. So kind of early, um, but still along the wall. So you could see that, I mean, we traveled a little bit of a ways out there. I kind of got a little hesitant, but not a big deal. Remember that this guy can summon. He broke fear the one time uh, and summoned me. So if you try to run, be ready. He, again, he hit hard. Uh, one, I got a few hits for 150 earlier, brought me down quite a bit, so I switched to a heal song as well, as well as the uh, Breath, of Har or Breath of Harmony clicky, right, the Nivs. Um, get me back up, right? Don't keep your health low. <laughs> Don't let it stay low. Doing pretty good with Foofles and Denons uh, for a while. It looks like you could just use Foofles as well. Uh, with, again, no gear. I, if I take the lighting off, I mean, it just looks like a dark blob. That's why I left the bracer on, just to have something. And if you stand in front, as this perfect example, he will repost and hit you as well, so always try to stay behind, get the maximum amount of hits. There he is. See you, dude. And that is that. So, you come in, you get your Chromadrake Guts, and let's see, we got a spell acumen and some more loot there. Oh, it went to my ring. <laughs> cool, that is it. So, it can be done. Level 60, no gear technically, <laughs> except for that bracer and two weapons, right? Um, it could have been any other weapons. Do I, does it need to be those? No, I just two that I had in the bank, so I just used them. Um, I had that well into Kunark releasing, even though this is during the Elias expansion, it is possible. So cool, we got it. We can do it. Hope this guide helps a little bit. Um, and how to get the placeholder over here and how to solo Eldrig. Uh, you will be a champion on your way to getting your epic. So we'll see you guys next time.